And some of us are short, too. <laughs> it's okay. God loves everybody. <laughs> Tall people, short people, fat people, skinny people, all different color people. Boy, somebody wound him up. <laughs> God loves us all. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we should love God. Amen. Praise your Father. God is so mighty. God is so good. Yes, Amen. he is. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Let's just speak the word together, okay? Yeah. Say this, I can do all things, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Christ strengthens me. Christ strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The greater one is in me. The greater one is in me. The greater one is in me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Christ strengthens me. Jesus took my infirmities and he bared my sickness. And with his stripes, I was healed. I was healed. I was healed. If I was healed, then I am healed. His healing virtue is flowing through me now, making me completely whole. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, in the mighty name of Jesus. I can submit myself to God and resist the devil, and he shall, that means he will, flee from me. I do that by the power of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise you, Father. Turn with me to the book of Jude, <laughs> chapter 1. Some of y'all like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, Jude was the brother of Jesus. Jude had, I mean, there's two writers that are both brothers of Jesus. I mean, maternal brothers of Jesus. Jesus was the firstborn, but he had lots of brothers and sisters. Two of them become, became mighty followers of Christ. Two of them became mighty men of God. One of them was James and one of them was Jude. And they both wrote with epistles in the Bible yes. that got canonized in the New Testament. Jude, now they both understood that you have to keep living right to make it. James says, if a man say that he has faith but hath not works... Can his, his faith save him? And it's implied that it is, cannot be so. He said, you show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. He said, therefore, faith without works is dead, being alone. That's what James says. The last two verses of the book of James says, Brethren, brethren, if any of you do err from the faith, and another one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner. He was a brethren. Now he's a sinner. Why? Because he erred from the faith. I mean, we need to keep our eyes on the Lord because that's the only way we have the strength to keep walking by faith. It's like Peter, when he began to walk on the water, he was walking on the water. And he got his eyes off Jesus and he looked, looked around him because the wind was strong and the waves were picking up. So he got his eyes off Jesus. As soon as he did, he began to sink. It doesn't say he sank. It says he began to sink. That means he just slowly began to sink. And in life, sometimes we're beginning to sink and we don't really realize it. We need to keep our eyes Amen. on the Lord. Amen. Amen. It says in 1 John, it says, I believe it's in 1 John. It could be in Colossians. But it says, when we, when we get into sin, it's because, and in the Greek it says, you've, you've not continued to stare at Jesus. You've got your eyes off him. In, in the King James it says, you've never seen him. But that's, that's a past tense. It's not in the Greek like that. In the Greek, is you're not continuing to stare at him so you don't know him, present tense. So when we, when we get our eyes off Jesus, we get our eyes off Jesus and look at our circumstances, then it's very easy for us to fall. Yes. Why? Because we don't have the strength in ourselves to do what God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. Je Jesus himself said in, 
in John chapter 15, he said, without me, you can do nothing. So when we talk to people about Jesus, a lot of people say, well, I just can't do that. No, you can't. That's why you need Jesus. Because we can't do it on our own. Paul talked about it in that Romans chapter 7, talking about a man trying to live with God, for God, without Jesus under the law. He said, I just couldn't do the same thing I wanted to do, and I kept finding myself doing the things I didn't want to do. And he said, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Only through Jesus Christ. How many needs help from Jesus? Yes. You just call out to the Lord. Peter just called out, Lord, save me. Lord, sozo me. Lord, deliver me. And Jesus reached God by the hand, and he picked him up. He walked him back to the boat. He said, wherefore did you doubt, Peter? Why did you, how did you doubt? Well, the way he doubted is he got his eyes off Jesus and onto his circumstances. So we in life, we need to just keep focused on Jesus, on what he's done for us. We keep our eye on the word. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And he created all things. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. That's talking about Jesus. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glorious of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ, the living God, comes to abide in us. Amen. And he makes our, his abode in us. When we surrender our lives to Jesus Christ, something miraculous happens. We are actually by the Spirit joined to the Lord. And His Spirit is joined to our Spirit. And we're made alive by the Spirit of Christ. Paul said in Romans chapter 8, he said, The Spirit of Christ be not in you, you're not one of His. That's right. The Bible says when, when God, when we receive Jesus, then God sends the Spirit of His Son Jesus into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. So we are literally joined to the Lord. Our spirit is joined to the Spirit of Jesus. That's why we can live free from sin. Amen. We don't have to live like, the, like we used to live. We've been set free. Amen. Say, I'm free. I'm free. Jesus set me free. Yes. And who the Son has set free yes. is free indeed. Yes. It's only through Jesus Amen. that I can live right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Jude chapter 1. Chapter 1. Stay on chapter 1. Jude chapter 1, verse 1. Now, those of you who don't know, there's only one chapter in the book of Jude. So. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, who was his brother, and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father. Sanctified means made holy. By God. That word by is a Greek word in, and it literally means positionally, in God. You see, when we're, when we're joined to the Lord, we're reconciled back to Father God through Jesus Christ. Yes. Because His Spirit makes us alive to Father God. Jesus said, when I leave, you don't have to ask me for anything, but whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it for you that the Father may be glorified through the Son. Yes. So when we're in Christ, and in Christ is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Father and Word, Holy Ghost. When we're in Christ, then we've been reconciled to Father God. Amen. Then the Holy Spirit can also lead us, guide us, and direct us. Because in Christ is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So when we're walking in Christ then people should know it because the, just the anointing that's on our lives should open people's eyes. Amen. I, 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 I can run into a person and I can know if they're a Christian a lot of times. I just know it. I can just tell by the life of God in it. When Jesus rose from the dead, first thing he did was went to his apostles, his disciples. Now a lot of people call Jesus disciples, his apostles, and his apostles were his disciples. But he, he, he had lots of disciples, but not yes. very many apostles. Yeah. Apostle is a ministry position that God has to call you to. 
And he prayed, oh, Jesus prayed all night long before he chose the 12 apostles that God called to be apostles. He prayed all night long. Why did he do that? Because he only did and said what he heard the Father do and say. Jesus was like that. And then in Romans chapter 8, it says, those that are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. So if we want to do the works that Jesus did, we have to do the works that Jesus did in like prayer, in like seeking God. Yes. Jesus prayed massive amounts of time so he could hear from Father God. Yes. If you don't talk to somebody, you can't hear from them. That's have you ever noticed that? <laughs> If I want to know something about Tom, I, I give Tom a call. Why? Because I don't know by, you know, I need to hear from him. If I want to hear something from God, I need to talk to God. Yes. That's called prayer. Yeah. Prayer is just talking to God. Just talking to God. Just like you talk to another person. Say, Father God, I, I need help in this area. When I was even a teenager, kid, I got saved when I, was, when I was nine years old. I got filled with the Holy Ghost when I was 12 years old. I got called in the ministry when I was 14 years old. But a lot of times I didn't understand the Bible. So I just said, Lord, I really need help understanding this. And God would just grace me to understand it. It's grace me. It's a gift. Grace is a free gift of God. God's grace is sufficient for us. God told Paul, when Paul was struggling with something, Paul, and he sought God three times, thrice, to take it away from him. And God said to him this. He said, he said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. Now, what he meant by that was that what he had already done for him was sufficient to meet his needs. Every, every time I heard a preacher say God said no to Paul, in, inside my spirit, I heard the Holy Ghost say, where do you hear no insufficient? That's right. What part of sufficient means no? I didn't say no. I said no. What I've already freely given to you is sufficient to meet your need. You see, he was dealing with a demonic imp, a messenger of Satan, the Bible says. The word messenger is angelos. It's usually translated angel. So, so it was a demon that was trying to buffet him and stop him from getting the revelation out that God had given him a great revelation. So he was buffeting, fight him everywhere he went, <coughs> trying to fight him. And he sought God to take it away from him three times. Now, remember this. Jesus went to his disciples. Now, Paul wasn't there, but Jesus went to his disciples and apostles. And he told them, they said, we're astounded that the demons flee at your name. And he said, and Jesus told them, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. He said, behold, I give unto you power, which was exousia authority, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the dunamis power of the devil, miraculous power of the devil. The devil does have miraculous power. And we are in a fight today. Yes. We're in a fight every day. Amen. We have an adversary of the devil who goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Yes. So we're in a battle, a fight against Satan. Because, because he hates all of mankind. He's not just trying to kill us. He's trying to kill everybody. Because we are in the position that he got cast out of heaven for desiring, for, for bragging about he was like the most high God. He was going to be like the most high God. That pride that he was lifted up with cast him down from heaven. Cast out of heaven. And a third of the angels followed him. With him. And so God freely gave us. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, he, him. God created man like him and gave him dominion and authority in the whole earth and over everything of all the fowls in the air, everything that creeped upon the earth. He gave them authority over all it. He said, subdue it. Yes. Take authority, take dominion over it. And then just like Jesus and Paul said, he said, whoever you yield your members to obey, that's who slave you become. So when Adam and Eve chose to believe Satan instead of believing God, and obeying Satan instead of obeying God, they became Satan's slave. And everything that God had given them, had given them, they laid over into the hands of Satan. When Satan came and tempted Jesus on the mount, when Je in the wilderness, 
He told him, he took him, the Bible says he took him on to a high mountain. He showed him in a moment of time, say a moment of time, moment of time. all the kingdoms of the earth. Now that's miraculous. That he could show him in a moment of time all the kingdoms of the earth. And he said to them this, he said, if you just bow down to me, if you just bow down to me, I'll give you dominion and authority over all this because it's been delivered to me. That's right. How did it get delivered to me? Adam and Eve delivered it to me. How did they get it? God gave it to them. To them. Then when they bowed their knee and obeyed Satan instead of obeying God, they delivered all that, all that they had became Satan's yeah. because they became slave, the slave of Satan. Yeah. So then the Bible calls Satan the God of this world. We were the God of this world. Yeah. In Christ, we can walk in more authority Amen. over the Satan Amen. and over all his power. Over all his miraculous power. And nothing shall by any means harm you. That's what yes. Jesus said. Amen. So we just need to believe the word of God. Jesus came to set the captives free. We are we're enslaved to Satan. Jesus, Jesus went to some. Jesus was preaching and a bunch of the Jewish people believed in him, the Bible says. We call that believers, right? They believed in him. And Jesus said to those disciples, those, believe, those Jewish people who believed in him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And when they said, will set you free, that kind of got under some of their skins. Because they thought, because they were born as Abraham's seed, they were already free. And they, they actually spoke to him, and he said, what do you mean we'll be set free? We'd be Abraham's seed, and we've never been in bondage to any man. And then Jesus said this, Whoever commits sin is the slave of sin. But who the Son has set free is free indeed. So, and so then they got mad at it. And, but before it was all over, they picked up rocks to stone him. Isn't that something? They believed in him, and all of a sudden, the word got under their skin. And they couldn't take it. A lot of times when I'm preaching, some people don't like it. Now get, the word gets under their skin and they can't take it. They just take off. But at least they got some word. The word of God is able to set us free. Amen. But we've got, we have, if we want to be set free, we have to continue in God's word. We have to keep our eyes on the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. You see, Jesus desires to be formed in us. And God gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. The word pastors and teachers there is linked together into one. So that's really talking about, instead of a five-fold ministry, it's actually talking about a four-fold ministry. But there are teachers, other places listed in the Bible as part of the, uh, the ministry gifts. So there are teachers, but that's actually uh, evangelist, I mean, a, a apostle, prophet, evangelist, and pastor teacher. And so pastors should be teachers. They should have a teaching gift too. God, that's just part of being a pastor, is a pastor teacher. So, so, but those gifts were given to perfect the saints, to help people grow up and be able to do the work of the ministry. Amen. That's what that means. Now, I used to think, I used to think, well, that they gave those gifts to perfect the saints, to do the work of the ministry, to build up the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of faith, to the fullness of stature of Jesus Christ. One day as I was praying, the Lord spoke to me clear. And he said those gifts were given to perfect the saints so they could do the work of the ministry, build up the body of Christ. You see, the Bible says in, in Acts, it says, when the church got persecuted, they spread out all over the land. They went to all different countries. And the Bible says that the gospel spread. How did the gospel spread? Because the people were doing the work of the ministry. Just the regular people. Church people. Godly people. When they spread, the gospel spread. Why? Because they were spreading the gospel to people around them. Sharing Jesus with those around them. And those who were hungering and thirsting after righteousness, they received Christ. And the gospel spread. And the church increased. That is, how, that is how we should be doing. We should be spreading the good news, the gospel, to the people around us. We should put ourselves in positions 
that we can minister Christ to people. And then we should be led by the Spirit. God will just pray for God to open the door for you. And he'll give you the words to say. But we should get the word big in us so the Holy Spirit can pull it out of us. Yes. When I had the, the last massive stroke that I had, I, I lost my ability to speak. And I couldn't say, I had aphasia, severe aphasia. And aphasia means you can't say what you're thinking. And it kind of messes with your mind. Matter of fact, when I was in the hospital, uh, they, they showed me a picture of the dogs playing cards. You know that old, that old picture? And they said, can you tell me what's happening there? And even though I knew what was happening, I couldn't say a word. Because that's that aphasia thing. And then at one time, they asked me how many kids I had. How many kids did I say I had, Kevin? Like three or four. I had, I had two boys. I was, I was messed up. I had people wanting to counsel with me, but I could not counsel with anybody because I couldn't say what I was thinking. I couldn't answer you hardly anything. But I'd get up here to preach. I mean, the next week after I had the stroke, I'd get up here to preach. And I could preach 10 or 15 minutes. And the word would just flow out of me. I've got those videos are still up on YouTube after I had the stroke, that stroke. And Kathy was praying and stuff. And God, what did God tell you, Kathy? Well, I was overwhelmed with the problem. You're not being able well, to... You got a mic? Okay. <laughs> I want people to be able to hear this. It was on. I was overwhelmed with the thought that he was going to be like this for a long time. Amen. And it really concerned me. And he was hard.